beginning to fly tie and you want to fly fish with your flies, the two flies that I recommend, and you don't have to buy many materials, just a few, is the waltz worm versus the pheasant tail. And I'm tying it on a quality vise, Norvice. I recommend it. Even if you want to get into it and you're just starting out, I recommend a quality vise to begin with. Otherwise, you're just going to regret buying a cheap vise, buying more vices after that until you actually get the one that you want. And then you'll have three, four vices in your closet that you never use. Alright, the materials that we're starting with is a pheasant tail. It's a natural. They come in an array of colors, but uh, start with natural. It's really good. They're not that expensive. It's like five bucks for two center tails. They've got a lot of material on it. Hair's ear. I'm using hair's ear as the collar for the pheasant tail as well. It's also, I think, like three, three, four bucks for hair's ear. Copper wire for both. This is like two bucks. And then a copper uh, bead. You can tell on one of the pheasant tail. Copper beads for the pheasant tail and the waltz worm as well. Glue. This one is from Wapsy and Zap collaboration. Scissors and a whip finish. And then for the threading, I like more of a natural color. This one is a dun, a dot dun, that matches the hair's ear really well, blends in. And then using an auto bobbin. Love the auto bobbin from Norvice. And then I got a thread stand I can rest my bobbin on. And that's pretty much it. One, two, three materials for two different flies. And you can tie the pheasant tail without the copper wire. You can use your threading on it. So that makes it four variations. And you can do the same thing with the waltz worm. Just use your threading and no copper wire. That's four versions that you can do. I hope you enjoy the waltz worm fly tying video. You can check out my YouTube page over at Black Raven Trails. I got a link down on the video. A traditional waltz worm in copper is what we're going to be tying. I have a jig hook and a 2.8 mil copper bead. And you have a slotted bead. You want to use slotted beads with a jig hook. So it sits right on that 60 degree bend. As you can tell, when I put the hook up down, upside down, when I put the hook upside down, it slides right in. You don't want to have it this way. You don't want to have it that way. But the bead generally falls right into place because most of the weight falls right to the bottom. Now, generally the most, uh, the color that I choose for threading, I generally use dun or tan or beige for a lot of my fly tying because it's more imitative color, um, matches the uh, dubbing or the pheasant tail that I'm using. All right. First step is to build a thread dam 
to push the bead and lock it in. I want to push the bead forward. This will also help build up the body too. Because we only have a couple of ingredients. Make sure this lock is up. Make sure the bead is positioned correct. I can tell the, as you can tell, the thread damp right there is like a cone shape, pushing the bead forward and locking it in right behind the eye so it doesn't slide. The next step, the Norvice that I love is the rotary. I'm building up the body, back, forward, back, and forward. The ribbing is ultra wire in size small. This is a size 16 hook, so I'm going for a smaller rib size. It's in copper. General rule of thumb, whatever your bead is, whatever color your bead is, is the color of your ribbon if you're doing wire. I like putting the slot to hold it a couple turns and then I tie in the wire towards me. Go forward and then go back again. From here you can do a whip finish. You can use your finger or you can use a whip finish tool. But you just need one. The reason why we are positioning the wire towards us is because we want to go under the hook. Alright? If we go over the hook, the wire sits more towards the back of the hook. Easier for the fish's tooth to snag on it, potentially break it. We want to build a durable flat. So always under. Okay, our next step is we're gonna put the dubbing. Here's your dubbing. Just do a little water on the thread to uh, grab the dubbing. And then we wrap the wire around the thread two to three times. I just do two. And we'll secure the wire. Wire back. Wire front. All right. Now we can pull the wire off. 
now we have we still have dubbing here. We can finish off the fly. Hold up a nice good collar. Our goal is to build a very durable fly. I want it to last as long as possible. Because I value my time. Very much. So I tie a really nice durable fly so I can have tons of good fishing. So I do about two, three turns with the glue, and then three turns for the whip finish. You can do it once or twice. With the glue. And you can either break it or cut off the thread. And my thread is a uh, a weight thread. It's on the thinner side. So I can do thin to win. I don't want to build up too much bulk. And lastly, I trim. Just don't put it as buggy or as thin as possible. When you fish, it'll become more buggy, more fish you catch. It's a really simple fly, and my goal is to is to reuse the ingredients, the materials that I use for one fly that I can use for the other fly. I can reuse the colored copper beads, copper ribbing, and the hair's ear on other flies. And that is the Hair's Ear Waltzworth. We're going to be tying the pheasant tail. It's with natural pheasant tail and natural hair's ear, copper wire for the ribbon and a copper bead. And the copper bead is a slotted bead for a jig hook. It's got a 60 degree bend in there for the jig hook to sit right behind the eye. What we're going to do is build up a thread dam, lock the thread in place, get rid of the tag end, and build a dam, a thread dam, to secure the bead behind the eye of the hook. It's kind of like a cone shape. Thin at the back, thick at the front, towards the bead. Now that it's seated, go ahead and turn the hook. Make sure the slot is vertically upright. Adjust the hook. There are parts, this is why I like the vice. You can spin all the way back. So you want to measure the length of the body. That's what the length of the tail would be. Once you have that. You do a loose wrap and then you pull up and that will seat the pheasant tail. 
the vertical position. Drop the thread and hold it back. ends in so we're going to have to cut and then we're going to tie the pheasant tail away from me go back to the front now we're going to tie in the copper wire I like to put the copper wire in the slot and we're going to tie this towards me breaks really easily, so don't pull too hard. That's why they're super glow, so it'll help seat it. Go all the way towards the front. Dubbing. Nice thing. Dubbing rope. 
this is super quick to the ready. fishing and I also have some gear on my YouTube page Black Raven Trails I also have an Instagram and a TikTok Black Raven Trails as well